I got the Assassin's Creed Rogue Platinum and got promoted from Numskull to Templar. As you guys have probably guessed, in today's video we are going to be getting the Platinum Trophy for Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered on the PS4 and I'm going to be taking you guys on the journey with me. Assassin's Creed Rogue was also a game that I played but never got far on or completed. It was good but I think because I had just come off of Black Flag and Unity was released at the same time, I gravitated towards Unity. So for the most part it was going to be me experiencing most of this game for the first time. If you guys haven't seen my previous Assassin's Creed Platinum video, go check it out. We got the Platinum for Syndicate and the amount of lives I ruined is just unbelievable. I'll leave a link in the description below, feel free to check it out. Now PSN Profiles rates this Platinum Trophy difficulty a 3 out of 10 and that it should take roughly around 35 hours to platinum. As with my previous videos I've broken this down into steps for me to roughly follow throughout my playthroughs. Step 1 is just to complete the main story, experience it, enjoy it and hopefully get some miscellaneous trophies cleared along the way. Step 2 is clean up time, go around all 3 maps visiting each location, getting all the collectibles, taking over all forts and headquarters and basically just doing everything that we can see. Step 3 will be to finish off any of the remaining miscellaneous trophies and for step 4 finally we will be using cheats that we earn as there are a total of 4 trophies for using them to do specific tasks and after finishing them we should have the platinum trophy. So with all that out of the way, let's get this platinum. The year is 1752, just before the French and Indian war and we are introduced to the main character, Shay Cormac, an assassin apprentice. We begin the game and are chasing down an assassin, and not even 5 seconds after gaining control of Shay for the first time, we experience some of the classic Assassin's Creed movement at its finest. That out of the way we chase the assassin making our way through the trees until we have the chance to strike. Turns out this assassin was our friend Liam O'Brien. Midway through conversation we are interrupted by the sound of cannon fire and head over to investigate. We come across a Frenchman named Chevalier and find out that he was attacked by some English troops. We get into a disagreement, we throw hands and he's lucky Liam jumped in because he was about to be taking an early nap. We head over to a nearby British soldier camp, board the boat, take out the soldiers and free the smugglers. We come to the conclusion that the ship was now without an owner, so we claim it for ourselves and name her the Morrigan. We head back to Chevalier's ship and save it from getting left at the bottom of the ocean and after dropping him off we head back to see our mentor, bringing us to the end of the prologue and beginning our adventure. What course would you have me set Shay? Time to report back to the mentor, wouldn't you agree? Wise words captain, wise words. At this point we get pulled out of the Animus where we find out that we are an employee at Abstergo and the genetic memories of Shays we were in had caused a widespread issue throughout the entire building. We repair the servers we have access to and are told to continue our work. We re-enter the Animus and are given our first trophy. Back in the Animus we arrive at the Davenport Homestead, home to the assassin mentor Achilles Davenport. While at the homestead we see another assassin, Adewale, make an arrival. Him and Achilles head off to talk about his time in the West Indies and we overhear their conversation and discover that the precursor temple in the city of Port-au-Prince could have been responsible for its earthquake. After eavesdropping we head over to the rest of our tutors and begin training where we learn the basics of gunplay, stealth and hunting. After training we report back to Achilles where we discover that the Templars have managed to steal two ancient artifacts, the manuscript of ancient wisdom and a box that allows one to understand its language. Whoever controls the artifacts will allow its controller to access precursor sites and with this information at hand Achilles gives us the task of retrieving these artifacts. Me and Liam make our way over to Anticosti and are told by Aspire that he spotted one of the artifacts we were looking for and that it was being taken to the Templar, Lawrence Washington's estate. We infiltrate the estate where we find Washington discussing plans with his fellow Templar agents. We wait until he's unguarded and we put an end to his life. <sighs> you are too late! Unfortunately though, Lawrence Washington had neither the manuscript or the box and with now everyone realising what has just happened, we had to head back to the Morrigan and make our escape. Sequence 1 ends and we unlock our second trophy. We then meet with Lusha Sir, where he informs us that the Templar by the name of Samuel Smith has a precursor box and is refitting his ships nearby. 
As we give chase to Smith, we are ambushed by some enemy ships that even attempted to board us. We defended our ship against the reverse boarding and unlocked another trophy. I don't see Smith! Eventually, Samuel Smith is forced onto land, which turned out to be the biggest mistake he made. We assassinate him and obtain the ancient box. No! We then travel to Albany where we discover that the Templar James Wardrop is nearby and has the manuscript. Like with Samuel, his life was brought to an early end and we obtain the manuscript. We then assist Benjamin Franklin in retrieving his lightning rods and he agrees to help us activate the box. Through some experimenting he manages to activate the box and a map is projected revealing the locations of multiple precursor sites throughout the world. With that knowledge we are then tasked with heading to the city of Lisbon in Portugal and finding the piece of Eden hidden within the city's large cathedral. We solve a puzzle which reveals an elevator that takes us down to the precursor site. We find the artifact but as soon as we pick it up it begins to disintegrate in our hands and causes an earthquake to hit the city. We make our escape as we watch the earthquake reduce the city to rubble. Once we arrive back at the homestead we confront Achilles on what happened back in Lisbon as Shay believes he knew it was going to happen but still sent him anyway. We are sent away by the assassins but we can't let Sly what just happened and we can't let Achilles and the assassins continue to bring down cities. We sneak back into the manor and steal the manuscript where we are interrupted by Achilles and are forced to make an escape. Eventually we come to a dead end and are surrounded by the assassins. Now we are left with a choice, jump into the water or go back, probably die and let them continue their work. We decide to jump but just before we get the chance to do so, Shay is shot and gets plunged into the ocean below. We then get taken 20 years into the future where we find out Shay actually survived and is in Paris but currently unaware of what his plans are. To make this easier to explain story wise later, I'm just going to show you the trophy for completing sequence 2. Shit! What happened? After completing sequence 2, we are taken out of the Animus again. We then talk to Otso Berg, repair some servers and jump back into the Animus unlocking another trophy. We then awake as Shay where he has spent several weeks recovering in the care of the Finnegans. Heading downstairs we deal with some thugs that are harassing them and then they then give us their late son's clothes and return our weapons. However, the manuscript was nowhere to be seen. We then decide to take down one of the local gang headquarters where we make the acquaintance of Colonel George Monroe, a Templar. He convinces us that at least for now they can be trusted and are sent to rescue another Templar, Christopher Gist, from a hang-in. After rescuing him, we eventually find ourselves back in possession of the Morrigan, with Gist taking role as first mate and putting together a new crew. Before doing anything, we get Shane to some new threads and give him some new weapons. And at this point, I just want to say Ubisoft, when are you going to take us to Japan? Please, Japanese samurai assassins would be absolutely incredible. Anyway, we raid an outpost, upgrade the Morrigan and then proceed to rain hell down on the fort. After taking down its defences and making our way to the war room, we come across Le Chasseur. Of course, this only ends one way, and he reveals to us that he has been sent here to deliver poisonous gases to use against the colonel's men. We then meet with the man himself where he tasks us with sabotaging the equipment being used to disperse the gases. We get given a grenade launcher by Benjamin Franklin and proceed to destroy the poison. Sequence 3 ends and we unlock another trophy. Sequence 4 begins with Shay finding a note along with a package containing the manuscript. We learn that Colonel Monroe had it this entire time after finding it on Shay after he was marooned. He knew of our assassin origins but despite that and having continued to prove our loyalty to the Templar cause, Monroe trusts no one else more and believes it would be better off with Shay. We also learn that the Colonel and some of his men have gone to Fort William Henry to deal with some hostile natives and French troops however hasn't received any requested reinforcements. Heading to his aid we meet with Jack Weeks where he informs us that the Colonel is walking straight into an ambush. We find the Colonel and escort him safely through the ambush before eventually being recognised by the assassin Kasegawase and making our escape back to the Morrigan. Our next objective was to travel back to Colonel Monroe and while doing that we managed to complete every activity in a single location for the owned trophy. And we also managed to utilize our grenade launcher to get the nap time and instant viking trophies. Aye. 
We later meet up with Monroe and Weeks. We return the manuscript as we are now just as much of a target, if not more of a target, and discuss Kasegawase's upcoming plans as well as how we are going to get the support needed to deal with him. We head to a native village that has been overrun with its villagers held hostage. We take out the pirates and free the villagers and with that the leader Onatar agrees to support us as well as take us to a strange looking door with some cool looking armour behind it. Don't worry, we'll be back for this later. We then assist some of Monroe's troops before we eventually sail to Albany and find the city under siege with Monroe's troops and Kasegawase's men battling it out. We eventually find and eliminate Kasegawase when he reveals to us that Monroe is already dead and saying the name Liam. With that information we head back to Monroe when we find the house engulfed in flames. We managed to bring him to safety but it was indeed already too late. Liam had taken the manuscript along with the colonel's life. Following the death of Colonel Monroe, we are introduced to Grandmaster Haytham Kenway and are formally inducted to the Templar Order, bringing an end to Memory Sequence 4 and unlocking us another trophy. Do you understand now? Once again, we are forced out of the Animus due to servers being offline. We talk to Otso Berg, meet with Melanie, and she grants us level 2 security access. We then take a moment to admire the view and then repair the next set of servers. We head back to the Animus where we unlock another trophy. Upon re-entering the Animus we are taken to our second glitched memory. Similar to the first, I'll explain this later so it's easier to understand. Following our earlier induction into the Templars we begin sequence 5 where we find Haytham and Shay discussing the precursor sites the assassins have found and the consequences of disturbing the relics inside. We then set sail for the North Atlantic to meet with Haytham Kenway and Captain James Cook and while on our way there we break through 500 meters of ice sheets and unlock the Icebreaker Trophy. Once we reach Captain Cook he reveals to us that French reinforcements are heading to Louisbourg and tasks Shay with taking control of his man of war and stopping the French. This memory is really a testament on how good the ship battles in this game can be and at some points could even be something you'd imagine seeing in a movie. We are one ship tasked with taking down a whole fleet. You've got the ocean, you've got fire, you've got fog and smoke, you've got the cool music and you've got mortars. I'm just saying I enjoyed this mission even if it was all open sea battles. After successfully wiping out an entire fleet, Captain Cook reveals to us that he has located Adewale. We set sail towards the French fort and eventually track down Adewale. He attempts to make an escape and after a battle at sea he is forced to beach his ship. We continue on foot with Haytham to track down Adewale and whilst Haytham was keeping him distracted, we went in for the kill. In his final moments we find out that Achilles already has what he needs and that taking out Adewale hasn't done anything to falter his plans. Sequence 5 ends and we unlock another trophy. Sequence 6 begins with us spying on the assassins where we find out that Hope has found a way to reproduce Benjamin Franklin's experiments and are preparing an expedition to a new precursor site. With that knowledge we meet up with Kenway and Weeks informing them of what we have discovered and with that we devise a plan to reduce the amount of men Hope has at her disposal. New York was still played with assassin controlled gangs so the plan was to steal some uniforms and disguise ourselves as gang members. We then rob a British fort which causes the British army to finally combat the gangs of New York. We also unlock the do not want trophy for countering 20 smoke bombs while doing this. We meet up with Haytham where we find him interrogating an assassin. Turns out Hope is nearby and located in the big mansion. We infiltrate the mansion and make our way onto the roof where we find Hope talking to Liam and showing him that she is able to activate the box. After Liam leaves, Hope must have realised we were there as suddenly she shoots up the skylight causing us to fall down into the warehouse. She then releases poisonous gas into the warehouse and makes her escape. This poison will stop our heart unless we keep moving, so we escape the warehouse and track down Hope. Hope put up a pretty lengthy chase, but regardless of her athletic ability, it was no match for Shays and we eventually assassinate her. 
We retrieved the poison and not only have we taken down an assassin, but we've also simultaneously managed to cripple the gangs controlling New York. You could tell this moment is hard on Shay, which leads me to believe she was possibly a potential love interest for Shay at one point. We then steal Chevalier's maps and with the assistance of Captain Cook, we track him and the expedition down to the North Atlantic. After taking down numerous fleets of ships, we eventually come across Chevalier's ship, the Gur Fort, and are forced to incapacitate it. We board the ship and kill Chevalier. We find out, however, that Achilles and Liam have already headed north to the Precursor site and that Chevalier was merely a distraction. With the location of the Precursor site revealed, we head north for the final showdown. While doing that, however, we got a bit hungry and spotted a pretty decent sized narwhal. We harpooned it and as well as getting fed, we get a trophy. We eventually make our way to the expedition site and Shay along with Haytham set out to find the Precursor Temple and stop Liam and Achilles from causing even more damage to the world. We eventually reach the heart of the temple and find that Liam and Achilles had already found it. We hear Achilles admit that he was wrong about the artifacts. Liam however still won't forgive Shay for betraying the Brotherhood. Achilles stops Liam from shooting Shay but in the process knocks the artifact which triggers another earthquake. Haytham chases Achilles and we begin chasing Liam. And yes, like in many Assassin's Creed games, there is a weird but ultimately cool chase sequence that involves you avoiding energy beams. After chasing Liam through the collapsing ice caves, we eventually catch up with him but the struggle causes the ice below to break off, causing us to fall down into the snow below. Liam is in a pretty bad way at this point and hands us the manuscript before finally succumbing to his injuries from the fall. We then make our way back to the Morrigan where we find Haytham about to kill Achilles. Shay convinces Haytham to spare Achilles as he now knows that the artifacts are dangerous and that killing him would only cause the remaining assassins to continue blindly searching for them. I do believe though that another reason why he spared his life was that Shay probably still had some sort of respect for him. Haytham agrees to spare him but not without a catch. He suddenly turns around and shoots him in the leg, crippling him and ensuring he can't carry out his plans. With the assassins gone, Haytham gives Shay one final task, locate and obtain the precursor box that Chevalier had transported across the world and with that, sequence 6 ends and we unlock another trophy. Incredible. We are then pulled out of the Animus again and are tasked with now uploading the memories we have of Shay and are granted level 3 security access. We head down to the basement of Abstergo in a pretty creepy and atmospheric first person sequence. I promise you won't die if you follow the bright lights. We restore the servers, bring the entire building back online and upload the memories of Shay. We then head back to the Animus, re-enter it and unlock another trophy. After re-entering the Animus, we are taken to our final glitched memory, but before we do that, let's talk about what's happened in the previous memories. The previous memories had us in the year 1776, and Shay's search for the precursor box had led him to Paris, France. In Paris, we come across Benjamin Franklin and save him from some of the local thugs. We ask him for assistance in getting into the Palace of Versailles. He agrees, and this is where the final glitched memory begins. We then discover the man we are here for is Charles Doria, with him, his son, Arno. We infiltrate the Palace of Versailles and begin searching for a secret meeting between him and the King. Avoiding the guards, we come across Arno playing with Elise, and if you've played Assassin's Creed Unity, then you'll know this sequence. Hey, I'm here with my father. So am I. He has important business with the King. What should we do now? We eventually find Charles Dorian searching for his son and assassinate him, taking the box in the process before taking our leave. Now, for me as someone who had played through and finished nearly every other Assassin's Creed game, including Unity, but never completed this game, this was a completely draw-dropping moment and really just entire experience for me. The fact that we play as Shay throughout Rogue, already tying in and creating links between characters across multiple games, and then find out that Shay is also the man who killed Arno Dorian's father Charles at the beginning of Assassin's Creed Unity, and are perhaps one of the biggest reasons behind the French Revolution, Never the game told an amazing story, linked multiple games and characters brilliantly, and I loved every so moment of it. We then unlocked the No Page on Turn trophy for completing the final glitched memory of the game. Trophy. 
We then brought to a cutscene that showed the Abstergo worker that we have been experiencing these memories as talking to Otso and Melanie, where they reveal to us that they are actually Templar agents and that the Templars have been reborn, disguised as Abstergo Industries and Entertainment. Pleased with our progress and also not really given a choice, we are immediately promoted from Numskull to Templar agent. And with that, the main story was complete, unlocking us the Templar then, Templar now trophy. Now that the main story is complete, first thing on the agenda was to replay any story missions that we didn't 100% synchronise. To do this, we need to complete the mission along with its optional and failable challenges. While doing this, we unlock the Ninja Trophy for completing an outpost without getting detected. And after a few more missions, we finally 100% synchronise all missions in the game, resulting in another trophy. Now it was clean up. This was going to take a decent amount of time as there was a lot to do. We needed to go around all three maps clearing all gang headquarters, settlements and forts. We needed to visit every location as well as do everything in that location and obtain every collectible in that location. And there were a lot of collectibles and on the screen now you are going to see all the collectibles that we are going after as well as how much of each of them we need to collect. Yeah, ridiculous. While doing this we also needed to work towards completing 65 out of the 70 Abstergo challenges. Now the trophy for those challenges only requires 35, but there is a trophy that we will be getting later on that requires us to use the Veterans Cheat, but in order to use that we need to complete 65 challenges. Luckily a lot of progression towards this will happen naturally while cleaning up all of the side objectives. Anyway here's a little montage of me doing all of that and unlocking the trophies. <laughs> Ready. After visiting every location, doing absolutely everything we could, collecting everything we could, it was eventually time to turn in some of those collectibles in order to get our hands on some armour and some trophies. Remember that door Onotar showed us earlier? Well now we can open it, obtaining the native armour and unlocking the ancient hero trophy. Then we use the Templar relics that we had found after following countless treasure maps and unlock the Templar armour as well as the Knight of Yore trophy. Next we need to salute 20 supply camps and 20 ship convoys for their respective trophies, as well as gaining enough materials while doing so to fully upgrade the Morrigan as we have a big fight ahead of us. For the supply camps it was relatively easy, I spent most of my time in the river valley fast travelling to and from about 4 different locations, as by the time I had cleared out 2 camps the previous 2 will have regenerated for us to loot again. We eventually loot our final supply camp and unlock the camper trophy. While doing this we had also looted enough materials to fully upgrade the Morrigan, netting us the Phantom Queen Trophy. Now at this point I still needed to finish off looting ship convoys in order to get its respective trophy. The pubs were no longer offering me intel and so I was forced to find a tactic that pretty much ensures me a ship convoy pretty easily. Starting in the North Atlantic we fast travel to Fort Louis and upon spawning in we look to our left to see if we can spot a convoy. Convoys are frigate classes of ship and are usually accompanied by two other ships. Once we spot the convoy we board and loot the ship, fast travel back to Fort Louis and rinse and repeat. This still took me a fair amount of time to do but before long I looted my last convoy and unlocked the What's Yours Is Mine trophy. Now with all other miscellaneous trophies out of the way and with a fully upgraded Morrigan, it was time to complete the four legendary battles located around the North Atlantic. 
The first three battles were pretty easy at this point, considering I did have all of the upgrades. I still cut it fine a few times, but it was nothing that I couldn't handle. The final legendary battle, however, oh boy, that was a whole different kettle of fish. We were up against a ship called the Storm Fortress, a massive ship that's huge in comparison to the Morrigan. She's got an ungodly amount of firepower, cannons, mortars for days, and what makes it worse is that nearly every single shot consists of flaming cannonballs. This ship gave me a tough time, and once I eventually got down a strategy, I found out that two more legendary ships spawned to ruin my day. Not only that, but it seemed like every time it was in my favour, the final ship would decide to constantly ram me and I could literally do absolutely nothing to stop it. Eventually though, after some struggle, we complete our final legendary battle and unlock the Master of the North Atlantic trophy. At this point I then realised that I actually missed some collectibles earlier. You see, when out of the Animus we have the opportunity to walk around Abstergo Entertainment and repair all of the computers. Thankfully, there's only about 20 or so, and they're in close proximity to each other for the most part, so this didn't take too long at all. Now it was time for the four remaining cheat trophies. First of all, we went for the two endurance trophies. One required us to sink 10 ships in the North Atlantic without dying, and the other for killing 30 enemies without dying. And of course, the endurance cheat doesn't allow us to regenerate health. I expected this to be a lot harder than it was, but I guess considering I had all upgrades, it was ridiculously easy, and in no time at all, we unlocked the I Endure and Killing Machine trophies. <laughs> Next up, we needed to sink 10 ships in the North Atlantic while the Hunted Cheat is active. The Hunted Cheat causes a constant flow of enemies to chase you down. I personally wasn't getting chased, and I was the one who actually had to do the chasing. 10 minutes later, and we unlock another trophy. Now it was time for our final trophy of the game. For this trophy, we needed to use the Veterans Cheat and take over 10 large supply camps. Now at this point, I personally hadn't seen a supply camp called a large supply camp, so I assumed this was probably referencing outposts. My only issue was that I couldn't get any outposts to regenerate, so after about 20 minutes, I decided my only option was to clear out normal supply camps and just hope for the best. Luckily, hope gave me the best, and 10 supply camps later, we unlock Supplier, our final trophy of the game, and of course, a definitely well-earned Platinum trophy. And with that being our final trophy of the game, this also brings us to the end of the video, and I have to say that I thoroughly enjoyed my experience playing Assassin's Creed Rogue. The story, as with most Assassin's Creed games, to be fair, kept me engaged throughout its entirety. It connected multiple Assassin's Creed games and stories, and I learned about a lot of characters that I had seen before and even after this game's release. The combat was fun and familiar, the ship battles were engaging, and upgrading your ship actually felt rewarding as you could visibly see the difference in battle. The only thing that made this platinum tedious at times was the collectibles, but I expected that in a game of this size with three different maps. Regardless of that, this is a platinum trophy I'm definitely happy adding to my collection, and it gets me one step closer in collecting all of the Assassin's Creed platinum trophies. With that though guys, this brings us to the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed the video and would like to see more like this, then make sure to hit that like button and share this video around. It helps with the algorithm and shows your support, and of course your support is always appreciated on this channel. And if you haven't already, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn notifications on to stay up to date with everything I upload. I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.